Hey guys, Joe here. Thanks for checking out another video on the channel. And before we get going, obviously I do want to address what has happened over the course of the last week here on the channel. And that is, I've started doing more short form videos, basically a video every single day. And that has driven subscriber count insanely high for me anyways. I've gained almost 4,000 subscribers in the last six days. I want to see that continue to go. So obviously I'm going to continue to do my short form videos completely different audience. I totally get that. So I will not stop doing my two a week for long form videos. And again, as I can get out to the range, I will film it, but I want to start doing those by myself because I don't like having a structured setup with multiple people on camera. It's a little more difficult. So moving forward, I'm readjusting how I film my road trips or my range trips. Today's video, if you saw the short from yesterday or two days ago, is on a new Ruger. Now Ruger came out with a 5.7 clone called the 57, and yes, you do have to call it the 57 because the 5.7 is actually a copyrighted name, and they came out with the 57 pistol. Really nice gun, and it kind of gave a resurgence to the 5.7 in pistol form because it is half, at least half, the cost of the FN variant. Rock, or excuse me, PSA has come out with a version called the Rock, and I've seen a few videos, and that one seems to be working pretty well, too, at about 20% less than even the Ruger. But what Ruger has done is stepped up the game even more by coming out with the LC carbine. Now, you may hear me call it the 57 carbine or the 57 LC. It is technically just the LC, but it's based off the 57 pistol, so take from that what you want. This is a telescoping blowback-operated 5.7 by 28 in an aluminum chassis with a 16.25 inch barrel and it has a 20 round capacity. So this thing ticks just about every box. Speaking of the box, let's go ahead and take a look at it. This one is on loan from Liberty Arms. However, the more I play with this thing, the more I like it. So a couple of my guns may have to go to the store in its place. $755. That is an insanely good price for a 5.7 carbine. The PS90, if you can find one, can run upwards of two grand, depending on what the options on it are. Uh, the CMMG 5.7 AR, granted you are getting an AR platform, but the 5.7 chambered AR is roughly twice that cost. So they are doing it well with their pricing strategy. The box on the other hand is a little annoying. It's actually harder to open the box than it is to disassemble the firearm. I said that as a joke once and it stuck, but inside you get a closed cell foam, one magazine with 20 round capacity. It is fully interchangeable with the Ruger 57 pistol and not much else. You get a little gun lock up there box out of the way. It's nothing fancy, nothing special. It's cardboard. A lot of Ruger's rifle length guns come in cardboard. In terms of overall weight, this gun weighs in just about six pounds-ish, maybe slightly more. And obviously if you add optics or grips, lights, lasers, tactical bananas, you mount the 57 pistol underneath, whatever you decide to do will affect its weight, of course. Being a 16.25 inch barrel, this is a rifle. It's a carbine, which is a short rifle. So it does not require you to be 21 to purchase, which is another boon. It is a suppressor ready gun. So it does have a half by 28 pitch up front. And because they designed this thing to be, well, basically a backpack gun, a companion to your hip drawn 57 pistol it does have a folding stock the folding stock is reversible so you would take it off take a couple screws out flip the whole thing over and then you can flip it over to this side because the gun is ambidextrous capable it does have ambidextrous safeties both left and right side in the standard spot for ruger however they did change the magazine release Again, 20 rounders compatible with the pistol. It is now a paddle style rather than the button. And I can understand why, because when you're grabbing a rifle, you just want to thumb, point down and go. They are not drop free. Maybe they'll become a little bit looser over time. That's fine. Again, you don't want to damage these mags because they're not exactly cheap. As a bolt lock, bolt release. Over here, you can see that the bolt is back with the magazine Actually, we don't need to do that on this one. So you can just 
drop it. And again, simple blowback, complicated bolt. We'll talk about that in a minute. Charging handle is on this side out of the box. However, it is reversible. So if you are lefty only, you can actually do that. But once you lock the slide back, you'll see that the charging handle is non-reciprocating. That is done on purpose to accommodate the folding stock. If the stock is folded, the handle, if it wasn't disconnected, would smack into the butt pad of the folding stock. The forward grip does come off, handguard, I mean. You do have to take out three Allen bolts, and then you can get to the nicely fluted barrel inside, as well as the mechanism that holds it all together in there. We're not going to be taking it that far apart today, but it is nice that it is easily workable. It has a long pick rail on top, so you can put just about any accessory or mounted item you want on there, along with M-Lock on all the other sides. So all of your standard M-Lock accessories will mount up and work. Aluminum body, polymer lower, polymer on the stock. These sights are basically what come on the AR-15 from Ruger, and they feel fine. Big, chunky bad boys. They are plastic, so or they might be plastic-coated metal, but they appear to just be plastic from what I can see. So if you prefer a metal set, feel free to swap those right out. Yeah, pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and talk about the trigger on this guy. It's nothing fancy. It's just basically Ruger spec. It feels exactly the same as the pistol. In order to do that, obviously, choke's clear. Drop the bolt, and then we can get to the trigger. It has a trigger safety in addition to the external manual safeties. And then once you engage it, you just pull the trigger back. A little bit of trash there. Take out the trash. And not bad. It, again, it feels just like the pistol, and it is, you'll see when we take it apart, a hammer-fired gun, so it is decent feeling. Reset. Basically out to the wall. You hear it. You don't feel it at all. And then next shot is just a simple follow-up. Exact same trigger pull, so you can be pretty consistent in that respect. Not bad. Let me show you for a comparison's sake. This is the standard LC and I am going to compare it to my custom AR-15. Now this is my custom build. It started as a Palmetto State lower. Well actually it started as an Anderson back in the day but it's been changed up a bit. But it has the Franklin Armory binary trigger, all that fun stuff in it. I should do an updated video on it. But as you can see the overall length of this gun is quite small. The entire receiver barely comes back to the rear of the ejection port of my AR-15. And that means when it's folded, this whole gun is barely longer than the barrel and the chamber of my AR-15. Being a six plus pound gun, it's not the lightest thing in the world, but it belies its weight. It really doesn't feel that heavy. For a comparison, this custom AR has a heavy barrel and everything in it. This thing comes in at over 10 pounds. But I don't mind. I like a heavy gun sometimes. Yathur, yathur, what do you say we take it apart? Okay, in order to do that, let's go ahead and check it. Nothing in the bolt, nothing in the chamber. Nothing in the gun, so let's go ahead and drop the bolt back down. In order to do this, you are going to want to have it upside down, so make sure your sights are folded down. It has one pin retaining it. You can take it out to the left or the right. I'm going to start on this side. I'm just using a star bit screwdriver. And you can see it's very easy to push. I just don't have anything in hand right now. Pay attention to the way this bolt come or this cross pin comes out. This needs to go towards the front of the gun, otherwise it will not click into place when you reassemble it and you'll be wondering why the pin is sticking out a millimeter or two. Ask me how I know. Once you've done that, go ahead and with the gun face down like this, go ahead and push down a little bit while pulling back and simply lift off the frame. I'm going to readjust you real quick so we can take a little bit closer look at the internals. Ah, gotta love jump cuts. Technically it's a one shot, but inside you will see this is the bolt. It's quite large. It is telescoping. Technically, it's just a two-piece. I really wouldn't call it telescoping because it doesn't actually extend. But somebody else called it telescoping, and the word is stuck in my brain. has a nice guide rod at the top of the receiver, bottom of the receiver when we're holding it like this. In order to disassemble it, first thing you do, 
bring it back while holding it. I'm using my knee and the buttstock to hold the gun here because you do have to hold the bolt in position. And you can pull the rear half of the bolt out. This locks into the front half, thus securing it. And uh, apparently there's some gun oil there. Once you've done that, release the bolt back forward and pull up on the guide rod buffer. This is just to grab it, so you can just grab it and pull up and out. Once you've done that, simply pull that all the way back and you can remove the front half of the bolt. As you can see, it locks up right there. So once it's in the gun, it's not going anywhere. That's a very, very strong lockup. And then the guide rod would sit inside like that. Very simple design, very easy. And the 5.7, even though it does have a good amount of pressure when it's coming out of the barrel, does not require like a super complicated roller delayed blowback or a gas piston operated blowback, although those would be pretty cool to see. The extractor is right there built into the side of the bolt and then the rounds just lock up underneath inside the groove there. Very easy, very simple. There's your barrel. As you can see, it's held in up here at the front. So if you take the handguard off, you can then pull the entire barrel out for a complete disassembly, or you can just leave it in like this and get a cleaning rod and you can do your field stripped cleaning that way. Yeah, very simple, very elegant design. The finishing on the inside of the receiver is very nice. Reassembly is the opposite. Take your uh, front half of the bolt, make sure the piece here with the lugs goes in like this. Simply slide that forward, as you can see like that. You're gonna put your guide rod in next because you won't be able to do it once the entire gun is reassembled. Make sure that is lined up correctly. Then you're going to bring the bolt all the way back again. While you're doing that, you're going to take that front lug, line it up with the gun. and then you're going to line it up. Sorry, with my disability, it makes it a little more awkward for me to do anything. But as you can see, once you've done that, you are fully back together for the receiver. Frame is actually very nicely finished. This is aluminum in here, and as you can see, it very much is identical to the pistol. There's your hammer. They are hammer fired. So is the FN, so there you go. It'd be complicated to add a ton of stuff back here for a striker, especially on this design. But yeah, let's go ahead and flip that back over. You'll see that it wants to actually sit into its own grooves, so don't force it. Once it's in place, you just push it forward. You see how easy that was? Literally just kind of wiggle it a little bit. It'll sit where it wants to, and then fluff it forward. Fluff it forward. That was my English. You take the cross pin, again, paying attention to that front spring, because that is what's going to help it line up correctly, as well as the shape of these two detents on the back. You'll see one side does not have those two little detents. So line it up the right way, and it will save you a lot of headache. You can put it in from either side because of the way the spring detents work. And of course, because my arms don't work well, I am just going to... Oh my goodness, I just bent the spring. God damn it. Pardon me for a second while I fix the spring. All right, so you gotta be careful with that little spring up there. If you, if you bend the snot out of it, it ain't going back in the gun. That was my bad, be careful. Just push the front of it a little bit as we start it. And I'm probably going to wind up having to replace this spring because I did damage it a bit. But there we go. Nope, we're good. And once you've done that, it will fit flush and you're good to go. So a little bit of an oopsie on my part, but we are good to go. So what do I think of the LC carbine? I think that one spring is probably a bad idea, but the rest of it seems to work fine. <laughs> if you are looking for one, get a hold of Liberty Arms, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Tell them I sent you. Say, hey, look, I saw this on the Jiminy Show. I'd like to get me one of those. Can you hook me up? Come back for more videos. Obviously, the long form and the short forms will continue every day because I want to grow the channel exponentially, and this seems to be the right way to do it. So, yeah, come on back. Stop by Liberty Arms. Buy one of these rifles. Tell me how you like it if you own one. Show me some video of one if you shoot one and come back for the next one. So until then, 
I'll talk to you later.